Well, hello and welcome to Always the Wild Ones. If it's your first time here, my name is Vanessa Lee. I woke up this morning, oh my gosh, I'm not even dressed, and had a quick look at one of my plants just looked unhappy. And then I thought, oh, just have a quick look at this one and turn the leaves around. Absolutely nothing on that leaf. But look at this really beautiful leaf. You see that? It's full of spider mite. I'm so, so upset. So yeah, I have a bit of a mission, a bit. I have to spray every single plant inside my home today. Um, it's pointless just doing one or two. So, oh, I can't believe that this is happening. It's not the video that I wanted to do today, but I thought I would share the downsides of having plants in your home and what happens when you take your eye off the ball. Um, yeah, so like you just saw, my Melona Chrysum has spider mite and not the easiest to detect on velvety or suede-like leaves much easier to see on a kind of shinier leaf which i will show you just now i'm going to swing the camera around and i'll just show you two plants that had spider mite and then i'm just going to go crazy and just get the whole lot done and yeah i'll talk you through it but yeah let's just get on with it oh are you ready Let's go. Oh, that's annoying. I thought I was filming. I was in such a major panic to get this done that I actually already started spraying. That's so frustrating. Um, so basically, yeah, I had gone through the whole thing of spider mite on this particular plant. Um, it will look like dust. And then when you try and wipe it off with your finger, it just doesn't come off. And that's why it's easier to detect spider mite on this on these kind of shinier leaves, shinier leaf plants. Um, and then I've already sprayed the Malona Chrysum. And what I do is, actually let me bring you in a little bit closer. So yeah, I will spray the plant. Ooh. I'll spray the leaf. This is the one with the awful Spider mite damage. Let me get you in a little bit. Oh my god. Oh my god. So there you can see it. It's pretty hectic. So yeah, I like to spray the leaf. Oh wow. I need to like just calm down. You can tell I'm freaked out. And then I'll just rub. And then I'll just rub the solution into the leaf, like gently in circular motions. So my thumb at the back is kind of doing that. And that's just to dislodge, dislodge the webbing. So she's been done. Let me just leave her alone before I end up. Next, uh, where are you? I want to do you next. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Why? Do you know what? I haven't had a coffee today. I've literally just bounced out of bed, saw that plant, put on some mascara. <laughs> I'm gonna switch the camera off for a moment. I'm gonna sort this plant out and then we'll, we'll regroup. Hi there, so I am back. I've had a bit of a disaster um, because I was panicking, but I've had a sip of my coffee and my goodness, what a start. I actually sorted through all the soil and took all the um, lacquer balls out. So yeah, I have been gone a little while. So 
Oh, actually, you know what? I need to get her back out of there. Let's sort this plant out. Get her happy in her soil again. And I need to try and get these lacquer balls at the bottom underneath all the roots. So I'm just picking up the roots here. Oops. Shuffle the balls in. Just try and rearrange them a little bit. Okay. She's back in. And then I just want to scoop this lot back in again. So I'm just going to rest her against me. I haven't even looked at this guy's leaves yet. I had a quick look this morning and I couldn't see anything, but we're going to have a closer look together. I also see a lot of mozzy gnats kind of flying around so I'll probably just spray this soil with some hydrogen peroxide that I've already mixed up. I'll go grab that just now. Okay, how is that looking? That's good. Right, I'm going to be right back. I am going to go and grab a little dusting cloth as well. I think that would be good. I decided to just bring everything with me. So yeah, this is kind of my box of pest control. Um, this is what I'm currently using today for spider mite. It does say on the back that it deals with spider mite. It doesn't say that it deals with thrips, but um, whenever I Google thrips or anybody else that speaks about products, they use this. So maybe it just does all flying stuff, I don't know. So I've got this little brush, I'm going to just dust off. any soil or whatever. Tidy her up a little bit after that. And then I wanna spray the soil with some hydrogen peroxide. I think I did one, I think I did 10 to the ratio of um, one to 10. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and spray this soil. Oh, here we go, that's better. Boom. Right, so let's have a look. Can I see anything? On this one don't actually see any any mites so that's good and I mean this one was stood right next to this Malona Chrysum which I showed you earlier they were stood side by side so that's quite interesting Let's get spraying. So yeah, this is kind of what I do. I will spray the leaf and then I will 
do circular motions like this to dislodge any of the webbing. And of course, she's not on the towel. I'm sat on the towel, which is a bit silly. So in this part, I actually have two plants side by side. I'm really hoping that it would fill up. And it's just so weird because I haven't, so I cut this one and I, that I can't see any auxiliary, auxiliary buds on the stem at all. But I'm just hoping it will just, generally it will poke, like the next leaf will come, will come out from here kind of thing. So hopefully, now that I'll give it a bit of a spray, hopefully it'll start feeling a bit better and start activating one of those nodes that are hidden that I can't see. Oh, there's got to be one somewhere on that stem. So this leaf here at the bottom is from the mother plant and I cut this leaf off of the mother plant and this grew from it. So a successful propagation. Oh, look, I've ripped the leaf. Okay, she's done. I'm gonna put her in her pot just to keep her nice and stable. Who is next? So next is my Cebu Blue. Oh, what are we using? I don't want that one. Yeah, so like even if you don't see pests, it is better just to do a little preventative at least once a month. Um, and now that I do have pests, most definitely have them, I'm going to have to do this again in two weeks' time just to kind of eliminate issues. So apparently like most pests like um, thrips and spider mite have a three week kind of window. So if you're seeing adults, I mean with spider mite it's going to be difficult for you to detect, but especially with the thrips. But um, yeah, when you see the adults then there's a likelihood that it would have laid some eggs. And so those eggs take three weeks to hatch. So, I mean, you could do this preventative every three weeks. I'm going to do it every two weeks. Okay, she's done. Let's keep moving. I was just basking in the sun. She was having such a lovely time. But I have been noticing, what have I been noticing? that the leaves just always look like this and she's not thirsty, there is water and you can see that there's condensation in there. There's absolutely no reason. I know that the pastazanum is susceptible to pests, all the pests. Um, I'm not sure, I think I've had, I don't know to be honest, um, I mean looking at the leaves, I don't see a hell of a lot of damage. There was one leaf that I had. I think it's this one. Oh, it's that one. So this leaf has a fair amount of damage on it, but it could be... Actually, no, you can't see it on that one. Where is that leaf? Oh, it's this one. Yeah, this is kind of like the oldest leaf this one and then when you look on the other side you can see like these kind of dots it could either be thrips or it could be um i don't know what they call it but um philodendrons have a tendency to let off this kind of weird sap and that can burn leaves when they, when the sun hits it Okay, this one is done. I'm gonna do my Clarinovium next. That 
that's her newest leaf. Isn't it gorgeous? And like all the others have actually started pointing upwards. Now. Well, they were all looking at the floor before and then I repotted it. I had to use this old water bottle because I could not find a pot the right size. Oh my gosh, I can see spider mite. Okay, check this out. Check this out on this leaf. You can see it here, right there. I want to drop this thing but yeah you can see it there yeah spider mite is taking over my home but I'm gonna sort it out let's spray them all first And then yesterday, I actually saw like some tiny, tiny little flies. Where was that coming off of? Um, I can't actually remember which plant it was now, but I was dealing with a plant yesterday. I think it was one of the Marantas and they are kind of susceptible to thrips. Oh, I've done that one. I've done that one as well. <laughs> Do this one. And these flies were really small and skinny and like kind of long and skinny. So completely different to a mozzie gnat. Mozzie gnats tend to look, I mean, they're also quite small, but they're like, have a slightly rounded formation to them. The how to describe them? Not long. They're short and um, round. They're short and round. Yeah. <laughs> okay, she's done. Yeah. The important thing right now is just to keep them out of the sun. Oh my God, I'm actually running out of space. My flat is just so bright. I mean, it's great, but not when you want to do this sort of thing, especially during the day. I think I'll move all of these guys into the kitchen just to make some space. We're going that way afterwards anyway, so that'll be fun. Next, my baby. I mean, look what happened to her. Look at this. I mean, those leaves are never going to look good again, so I'm just going to remove them. Get some scissors. Spider mite is clearly attacking individual leaves one at a time because it's just, I guess, an easier process. The likelihood of them still being on a particular leaf is high and these leaves are not going to make a comeback so I'm just going to cut them off. Oh, my baby is very very unhappy. And I literally gave this one a new pot like a couple of days ago. So she's not going to be easy to it's not be easy to spray really like each leaf, but I'm going to do my very best. I noticed the leaves maybe two days ago and I just thought, oh, Maybe it's not so happy with coming out of its last vessel where it was obviously quite comfy, wasn't showing any signs, no problems. So maybe it was just the transition was a little harsh for it. 
But yeah, now we know. I feel like almost needs half a bottle on just that one plant. Okay. I'm gonna pick all of this up and then just spray. this solution on here okay and then I'm just gonna let that be I'm not gonna rub in between each leaf I just don't have another leaf another one okay there she is taking off all the manky leaves I think I mean she still looks fine but we do now have bare areas, which is what I was trying to prevent. But, oh, is that a root? Oh no, one of them's not even in there. What's going on here? Well, this one's not even in the soil. <gasps> there. I think I'll just put that in some water on its own and just try and grow that out. And that is, mm. I might put another layer of um, pond on this as well. Okay, I'm gonna try and find a shady area for this guy. And I got a bottle of water. Put that in there. And I'll stick that in the kitchen for now as well. I'm gonna do this one next because she was right next to the Malone Chrysan before I moved that plant. And she does keep getting yellowing leaves. We've got quite a few in here actually, so. Let's spray this plant. Oh guys, we were doing so well. What happened? What happened? The Melona Chrysan happened. It had to be the Melona Chrysan. So yeah, those, well now I know, another lesson learned, which is to keep my Melona Chrysans in a separate area. Um, they weren't, to, to be honest, they weren't happy where they were. So I guess that that is no surprise that they would then call out for a pest to come towards it. Well, it's not that they are asking for a pest to come kill them. It's just that, you know, it's like if you're a little under the weather and you get on the bus and someone sneezes, <laughs> you're going to catch a cold but if your immune system's brilliant that person can sneeze as much as they want and it's not going to affect you so um or if it does you're not going to get you'll probably just get like a 24 hour bug or something and it's the same with the plants unfortunately if they're feeling a little under the weather there's quite a few yellowing leaves in here quite a few Another one, so I get a hold of you. Oh my goodness. I'm just gonna get rid of the yellowing ones because they're the ones that are clearly being eaten or being, they're under attack right now. So by removing them, I'm removing if there is any pests on them and we're moving that at the same time let's have a look at you
excellent plant. I mean, look, it was sat next to that minging Malona Chrysum for God knows how long and has only just started showing signs. It was, I mean, they were touching. They were that close. I tend to like, that's another thing that I do, like with my plants, I don't know if you've noticed, but they're all stood away from each other. I don't crowd my plants. Um, it's because of pests that I do that. But it just goes to show, like, you can't prevent it completely. But I do believe that if you have your plants pressed up against each other, then yeah, if one gets something, then they're all going to go down. Okay, I think... I think I got everyone. There she is. Oh, let's just hope and pray that we got them in time. Right, who's next? Oh, you come, baby. So I do this guy and little baby will be next. So this is my Philodendron Gloriosum, which was right next to. Well, she was close, not too close, but then I actually moved the Malona Chrysum and put this plant in that spot. And I didn't dust or clean or anything like that because I'm, I'm silly. So yeah, I'm gonna do a preventative. Brand new leaf. I don't see any pests, but... I mean, this is a velvety leaf plant, so sometimes they can hide better on those on those leaves. Yeah, so I think I was explaining in one of my videos, can't remember which one, that um, it was obviously something to do with philodendrons, that this plant has recently been giving me much smaller leaves. So these are the last two leaves that have grown and they grew in the summer, whereas all the other ones grew in the winter. So um, it would explain, if it does have a pest, that would explain a lot, to be honest. And yeah, hopefully we can just get there, get rid of it. And then that newest leaf will get a chance to size up, maybe, but definitely the next one. Okay, she's done. Boom. This is my little baby, Malona Chrysum. She's growing up. There's actually two in there. This little one here, it's a separate plant. Yeah, some of the leaves are a little bit big, um, darker than the others. So those two darker ones, are the most recent and that is because I pulled it out of the light completely before I was allowing the sun to hit the leaves and you can see it's bleached them out oh and it was also um, in the winter it was under a grow light and yeah I did kind of like think wow those leaves are very light in colour but it turns out this plant really doesn't need too much light. So I've got a bunch of plants that are now leaning towards being more low light. So I'm gonna have to find a new home for a lot of these plants. And I might do that today actually, just try and figure out where everyone should be living. Yeah, let's see how quickly we can get through this. I mean. I don't think, I haven't even done half my collection. I think I've done about 10 plants. Just another 100 and something to go. 120 plants to go. Yay! <laughs> okay, next. I did 
this little guy. My Anthurium Doriaki or Silver Blush, who knows. And... Oh God, there's just so many. Just all the little babies. That should keep me busy for a while. Let me tip this down a little bit because I'm running out of space. Right. It's spraying. Oh, look, this one's producing a new leaf. I didn't even notice that. This is a little cutting. I actually grew this from, um, sorry, it is a Monstera Albo. And I grew this from like a discarded leaf that had, was riddled in spider mite. And yeah, the that leaf is obviously long gone. It kicked the bucket, bucket quite a while ago. But look, so adorable. So let's just spray them all. Speed this up a little bit. So I'm not seeing any pests. Oh, just as I said that, hang on, I think I do see something on this one. I will show you. Yeah, let's have a quick look at the Florida Ghost. I mean, luckily with the shinier leaves, you can see, you tend, you can tend to see the spider mite. It will just make the leaves look really kind of subdued and not shiny. They'll just look kind of sandy and dusty. Okay, that's you done. Next. Okay, I'm gonna do the alocasias, I think, next. No. I'm gonna do my elbow, my Monstera elbow. Stick it on there for now. Here she is. So this plant I have had a full year now. I bought this last year for my birthday and it has produced a couple of leaves. I can't tell you how many. I think the ones that are kind of on the top here, these four, and they, it did that. And then it got to summertime and it's just stopped growing. But it's growing, constantly growing out of its pot. There's loads of roots there at the bottom. It's gonna be difficult to show you, but there are roots. Yeah, there are roots there at the bottom. Ugh. So yeah, let's give this guy a little bit of a spray. I'm actually going to have to make some more up because I've run out. Yeah, I've run out. Oh, it's quite full. Yeah, so I really don't know what's going on with this plant, it's quite sad. I was really expecting good things this summer. Give it a bit of a shake. But I have got nothing from this plant. Nothing. <laughs> and I've been upping its lighting And then when you can look, when you look at the back of these leaves, you can actually then start seeing this is new damage. This. I'll show you again just now, hang on. But yeah, I'm, I am seeing some new damage. So let me show you what I was just going on about. 
can really see it on the back of the leaves. Like, where is it? I mean, look, that is just, I know what's going on with that. But this one here, can you see that? That looks fungal. And I can see it again here on that leaf. And that has just happened in the space of a week. Not great. I'm going to go and put that one in the bedroom because I'm running out of space in this room. And I'll be right back. There she is though. This guy is going to be next. <laughs> She's a big one. I might actually have to tip the camera up a little bit. Okay, so next is my philodendron splendid. Oh my God, I love this plant so much. When I first bought the plant, I sprayed it with neem oil. So I'm not going to do neem oil again. I'm going to go in with the hardcore stuff. Neem's great as a preventative, but it's not going to get rid of, in my opinion, it's not going to get rid of the pest. Let's get in there. Let's get massaging. So these leaves are a little thinner, so I need to be careful. Yeah, I've noticed that these leaves feel a little thinner than the Malona Chrysum, actually. Um, this plant is a hybrid of two, and it is two parents are the Malona Chrysum, so that's where you get that lemp from. And the, what is the other one? Um, and the Philodendrian, oh my gosh, what is the other one? I just, my brain is just, it's not VTI, is it? I'll put the correct name up, brain's not working. And both of those plants are susceptible to pests. So I do know that I need to keep an eye on this one. Okay, I think I got all of them. I'm gonna go and put that behind me. I've got another one of those. I'll grab that. So yeah, when I bought this plant, the philodendron splendid it came oh, it came um with four stems i've got two stems on on that one and two stems here yeah i'm seeing spider mite on this i did ask when it because when it arrived it had like quite a few damaged leaves like it had this one. I mean, they're all, they've all got like a bit of damage on them. And I did ask, it was on sale and I did ask whether it was on sale because of the damage and whether it had a pest. And they confirmed that yes, that was the reason. I didn't ask them what pest preventative they were using or whether they would sprayed the plant or I don't know. So, but you know, like it, if you do buy a plant and it, you know, you are kind of concerned, like it's showing signs that it may have had a pest, just go ahead and give, send an email. Generally, I've never not received an email back when asking a question. So love the honesty, that's that one done love the honesty with the plant growers or the online plant shops and even if i shop um like a, a brick and mortar shop generally the staff know enough about the plant whether it has had a pest and 
they'll just be really honest and tell you and especially if it's not on sale they'll put it on sale and if it's already on sale then yeah they'll just yeah they'll just tell you what's going on there oh my god i can see it on this one so both these are two little philodendrians this is a cutting from my philodendron brazil which is out in the hallway and that probably has spider mite and this is a philodendron heart shaped or i think they call it the heart leaf philodendron i'm gonna spray both of these guys and i think i just spied i'm sure i just saw something Have a look. I think I just saw a leaf somewhere. There. Again, you can see that is spider mite damage. Okay, that's that one done. So yeah, next I'm going to do this begonia. Oh my gosh, that mat is sopping. Yeah, I'm being really heavy with the spray. <laughs> because I do not play when it comes to pests. Oh my goodness. They've all been suffering. And I've just been like, oh, it's just fine. Just, I just, yeah, it's so weird. I just completely forgot about my whole pest control routine. And I've just been admiring them, but not. I've been doing a lot of repotting as well. So that's that little guy. Hopefully she'll perk up again. I mean, she's not looking, ooh, she's found a dead leaf. I mean, she's not looking miserable. I mean, she's looked a lot worse. She has looked worse. Do they all look nice and glossy and wet? That's what you want. Yeah, that's done. So I'm gonna take a small break and I will collect all of the other plants and bring them over. And um, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, <laughs> we've done, we've almost done everything in this room. I've got four plants, six plants on the opposite side of the room. And then I've got the hallway. I've got one in the kitchen, which I'm going to show you, but I won't be doing the Hoyas and I won't be doing my ripsalis because I don't think that they get thrips and spider mite. If I'm wrong, leave that in the comments down below and then I'll, I'll be straight on top of it. But I mean, they are, they are kind of grouped together. So I should be able to I should be able to sort that out. Anyway, I'm going to have a quick break for you. It's going to be like five seconds for me. I'm going to take I think I'm going to take half an hour because I literally woke up, saw the plant, freaked out, did some crazy stuff, <laughs> calmed down, had my first coffee and then I've just done all this lot. So um, yeah, I'm going to have a little snack and I'll be right back. I am finally back. It's actually been quite a few hours. It's been about two hours. <laughs> It's just so hot in here. It's 28 centigrade right now. And the sun did go in, which is fantastic because it just means I can spray the plants. Yeah, it's completely overcast outside. So it's great. I can just spray the plants and not really have to worry about moving them all. So this is the next batch. And then there's a couple of plants behind and some in the kitchen in the hallway. I'm not gonna, should I video all of this? And the ZZ. So 
so my ZZ has been, this plant was three times the amount of what it is. It's been doing this, like kind of like, you can see the color is slightly different. It's just losing that darkness and it's looking quite gravelly. I don't know, let me see how close I can get. Can you see? The leaf is quite gravelly looking. And then I'll show you like a healthier looking leaf. And that's what it should look like. Yeah, so I've got all my alocasias here as well. And this little guy. Yeah, so I can kind of see that this one's looking, that leaf there is looking very kind of subdued, not shiny and bouncy and poppy like that. So that's kind of a bit of an indication that it might have spider mite. <clears throat> and then this one just always seems to get spider mite. I can't see anything on the leaves, but I'm just gonna give it a good spray down anyway. And then I also have my Epipremnum and Plissimum. And this one has just shot out two yellow leaves. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and it was right next to all of my alocasias, which seem, for some reason, they just always seem to get I don't know why. Okay, I'm gonna leave it in its pot because otherwise it might just wobble over. So let's get spraying. Oh my gosh, that just went all over my leg. So I've actually put like most of the plants that I've already sprayed in to my bedroom. And I mean, I don't normally do videos in my bedroom, but I will show you them all lined up because I'm running out of space in this room. And I have like um, a cutting from this plant which I was preparing for a plant swap and I don't think it's gonna make it. It's not looking good and I just don't feel comfortable sending it. Okay, there we go. She's looking glossy again. And yeah, my alocasias, like I said just now, just always tend to get spider mite. And I think that's what's going on with that leaf. And that one's on, that one looks like it's just on its way out also. I mean, oh my gosh, this plant. So this one was a little surprise. I got, I grew this from corms. Um, I, the one before I did not grow from corms, I bought it that way. Um, this one I, grow, I grew from corms and I actually thought this was a completely different plant. I thought it was the Alocasia cupria Cupria, or the, I think they also call it Red Secret, but it's looking much more like the Polly. I think it's Polly something. So yeah, she's just suddenly developed that leaf and I'm like, hmm, hello. I mean, this is, these are the leaves I was getting before. And then Boom, and we are getting a bit more of a pink stem. So although um, the leaves aren't kind of looking, you know, that weird dusty, why is it doing that? Yeah, although the leaves aren't looking kind of dusty or anything, I have been seeing some very odd signs on this plant, which I'm going to show you now. On this leaf here, you can see on the tips, like it's just all yellowing and 
I do not know what's going on. On the underside, you can also see like some weird, crazy things going on. Same on that one, you can see underneath. So I mean, it could be, I don't know. I mean, I just, allocations and me do not seem to get on. But I just love them. I mean, that leaf is just nuts. And for a plant that looks and feels so sturdy, seems to go through the most pest, pesty issues. Okay, another one. So yeah, that's a permanent and plissimum. So yeah, I'm gonna do my, the next batch is all of my Moran, Maranta Sia collection. And yeah, I'm hoping that actually, especially with that batch, I hope actually that it is a pest because then it's not all on me. Well, it kind of is on me because I've just left them to die. Well, they really do look terrible, you'll see just now. Um, <laughs> and then these two leaves, I think I'll just pull those off. Boom. Woo. Okay, let's do these guys. Let's get them all down. Oh my God, they just look awful. They really do. So we've got four, four Marantas. Here's the other one. Let's try and whiz through this batch. And then we've got one in the kitchen and then the hallway and then we're done. Oh my God, this has been taken. I've been doing this since this morning and it's already, I think it's about four o'clock, but I suppose I did take two hours off, but still that is quite a heavy day of spraying. So I'm gonna tip the camera down. Voila. And I'm just going to literally just drown it. I'm not going to do any circular motions. I'm just going to spray the plants. See, I'm slightly more invested with this one. It's actually going to get some, a little bit of a rub. And plus there's less leaves. Done. Next will be the Stramanthi. Maybe. Looking stunning. I must say, she's doing so well. I think I'm gonna just nip off and go and do another batch of the this because I've run out. Right, I'm back. Stripping. And I'll understand. And with this one, I am just going to go in and rub each leaf. Oh, I'm so glad I'm wearing gloves. My hands would be raw by now. So definitely get yourself some of these disposable gloves. Washing up gloves are going to be too um, 
thick so you're not really going to feel how much pressure you're putting. Let's get some on the back. I'm quite happy, happily go through a bottle on this plant because although I tend to neglect this plant, it's not because I don't love her. <laughs> It's certainly not that. We just spin her around. You get to look at the shiny side. Yeah, it's just that she's a trooper and she's, you know, she's quite, she's made of strong stuff. And because she doesn't complain so much, I do actually do um, quite a few pest preventatives on this plant because, I mean, if I might forget to water her from time to time, this is true, but I do, yeah, I mean, I think I did this plant last month and I haven't seen any signs apart from there is one leaf that has some scratch marks on it. And I'll show you that just now. And then these new ones, if you want those nice and spray. Just try and get in there. So yeah, you can see on this leaf, like kind of scratch marks. I don't know, Ooh. can you see that? And that is kind of an indication of thrip damage. You can also see it on the other side. Like there. I mean, spider mite, from what I've noticed on my philodendrons, tends to look like clusters of little dots. And then I think the thrips kind of work it, like when they gnaw across the leaf, they do it in like kind of a row, like in a row. So like they kind of go in straight lines. Just gnaw the way along. Done, brilliant. Let's move on. What I wanna do is my Adansonii and I've actually pinned it up. So yeah, I'm gonna to have to take it down to spray it. And it's recently been doing the whole yellowing leaf thing. So yeah, I'm guessing it's a pest. I mean, cause the watering, I've been really good with the watering this plant has been doing so so well but yeah this is what we're dealing with today she is not happy you look around here as well There's another yellowing one i think that one's all way on the way out as well and maybe one or two in there so we're going to lose a couple of leaves here so this one's yeah there's an urgency so let me take it off the wall okay we're almost done guys well, we're halfway through. Yay. No, I think we're probably slightly more than halfway through. I've recently been doing so well with this plant, so I really want to give it my best, my best shot because I had this plant, oh my gosh, how long? I would say a year, maybe longer. And I've tried multiple ways of making this one's life happier. Um, I've tried it in soil and I kept getting those yellowing leaves. I've tried different types of watering, like watering it more often, allowing the soil to just be moist. Um, when I first got the plant, I treated it like I would any other philid um, sorry, monstera, how I would treat any other monstera, which is, you know, to water them and then allow the water to disappear. What is going on here? Oh, they're still taped together, that's why. Yeah, because I mean, I would have just imagined that it would be a drought tolerant plant. And so, drought tolerant plants tend to enjoy having a fasting, a, a time of fasting. Gosh, this is going to be a headache. 
<laughs> um, what else have I tried? I tried it on a moss pole. Um, it didn't seem to make any difference. I was just left with balding areas where the yellowing leaves would happen. And it's not like it was the older leaves. It would happen on just up and down, you know, anywhere, anywhere on the stem, I would get a yellowing leaf. Okay, I'm really going to try and give them all a little bit of a rub, but I am kind of losing momentum. I'm not loving this. It's definitely not my favorite job. Like dusting the plants as well. I mean, that's something that should be done to prevent pests. And it's definitely not my favorite job. It's kind of like, I don't mind hoovering, but I don't like having to stand in one space uh, for too long. So like washing dishes, I find really irritating. <laughs> I can't help it and I just always end up getting loads of water all over my feet and what else don't I like like cleaning the bathroom it's not my favorite job either although I do find myself doing it fairly often because I do like a tidy bathroom like I feel that a bathroom really does like if I go into someone's home and the bathroom is unusable in my opinion like it's like dirty then the likelihood of me um accepting a drink or anything to eat is very well it's just not gonna happen i'll i'll just make my excuse <laughs> i can't help it i'm like a bit of a germaphobe um like yeah like being on london transport like i don't like touching anything like nothing and if i do sit down then when i get home or like actually even if i just pop out um the clothes that i wear outside i do not wear inside my house like i won't sit down on my sofa <laughs> i know this is so weird but yeah that's just me I'm a little bit of a weirdo in that way, but it just kind of like the idea of it just freaks me out. Okay, I think I've done my best with this. I am now going to, I'm going to show you the plants, the ones that I've sprayed and I've put in my bedroom and I'm then going to clean the shelves and everything. There's probably one or two plants that possibly I could spray. Okay, so we were in my bedroom. This is all the plants that were on the shelves in the living room. Not all of them, actually. I've got some in the kitchen that are just out of sunlight. We've got a northwest facing window just there. And yeah, this is the room that has the lowest light. So definitely the best situation right now they're gonna to have to go back at some stage they are looking a lot drier yeah none of them are looking shiny this was the last batch do they look wet still no they've kind of dried off so that's good news and then I just want to show you the hallway which is here um, got some syn a syngonium there on the floor, another melonochrysum, that's actually the mother plant. Um, but not too many plants out here actually. I won't be doing the Hoyas, I will just, I will do the Dracaena and String of Hearts, do I need to do that? No, I'll do the Silver Sword. I've got a little bit of my ZZ Raven there. My Pachira Aquatica definitely looks like she could use a little something. And then we've got two Skindapsis. I'll give those a spray. Actually, it's not too much. Oh, 
And then of course this guy down here, my philodendron in Brazil. Let's see, is there anything up here? Oh, I've got to do this guy. Yeah, I definitely need to do this one because I have been noticing. Yeah, that just doesn't look healthy. It looks very spider mite situation. So I'll spray her. But I think the succulents and stuff will be fine. See that kind of look a drab looking plant there? That's actually sunflower seeds that I've been growing. And I forgot to water it, so it'll bounce back. But I must put that in the garden. And then I just want to quickly show you, look. Look who's blooming. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see what happens. That is massive. Then I've noticed some other peduncles. Anyway, sidetracked. Let's get back into the living room. So yeah, I haven't done the jungle cactus. I haven't done, what is that thing called? Staghorn, my staghorn fern. None of the Ripsalis or the Hoyas. The Hoyas generally are more kind of mealy bug. I've don't I've never heard of a Hoya getting thrips or spider mite. I've never heard of that. I am kind of a little worried about my streptocarpus. So maybe I will spray the streptocarpus. Down here we've got more Hoyas and some propagation boxes. So those guys will be fine. I'm kind of tempted to maybe do the Linearis. I might do the linear, Linearis and the Staghorn. Actually, you know what, let's just put them down on the floor and just spray them anyway. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning. We've, I've got some detergent here. I'm going to use some domestic, I'm going in hardcore. So yeah, I've decided to just give these a spray just in case. I mean, she's not showing any signs, but it's just great do a preventative anyway since I'm doing them all and I mean can you imagine like <laughs> I do this to all the plants but one and that will be where the spider mites will go to next so I may as well just have started now so I may as well finish right now my streptocarpus and I just never missed I never spray this never had to spray it. I'm a bit worried about this, but I'm gonna do it. But it's just gonna be a light mist. I'm not gonna go crazy. She says, I mean, look, it would have got wet out in the wild, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Right, now we can actually get onto some cleaning. I think I'll put all of these in the rubbish now. Look at all these leaves. It's like a whole plant. Right, let's move you. So I might give this one a spray as well. Yeah, I think I will. Yeah, I mean, I really can't imagine spider mite being on this plant, but I'll give it a mist. Just a light one. But right now, all I want to do is just clean these shelves. Some more Ripsalis. Another one. Got a little bit of a collection going. I love them so much. They're so freaky and weird, but super cool. I mean, check out how this one has been growing. This one's been growing so crazy. It was so short and now it's got all these little spiky bits. Right, 
Good cleaning. So now I can get to the fun bit, putting all the plants back. So it's a shame it's not a bit sunnier because then you'll get to see what it looks like. Actually, you know what? I think I'm just gonna continue spraying the plants and then I'll do a plant rearrange in a different video because I'm feeling kind of pooped and it is 4.30 now, so hopefully I can get this done by about five-ish. And then I wanna pop out and just get some fresh air because it has been a very overcast but very humid, sticky day. So yeah, I'm gonna bring the next batch of plants in. Oh my God. <laughs> When is it gonna end? When? So here are all the plants that I've sprayed. I decided to go completely nuts. So these are the ones that were in the hallway. And I did do the Ripsalis in the end. I just decided to just go there. Uh, I've got the Dracaena there in the back and my Syngonium yet again. She constantly gets sprayed. <laughs> And then up here, I have my Hoya Linearis, got a nice spraying, got my Ritzalis Paradoxa, um, my Epipremnum Enjoy. And then up here, some Philodendrons, I've got an Epipremnum up there next to my coffee cup been drying off and yeah a string of hearts also been sprayed this guy's been sprayed i've just put it up here in the kitchen so that is what is left very bare just hoyas and i have a special hoya spray so i'll be spraying those with that and i brought this guy in the one with the bedongle, she's just resting like that. I need to water her. And this is the hallway. Every single plant, well, apart from that Dracaena, has been moved. You've got a string of hearts at the bottom there and that little cactus, which I'll just spray on spot. But yeah, it's looking very bare. And the succulents I haven't sprayed, they do not get those kind of pests but they do need watering and I have sprayed this this string here I just put her back because it's kind of gloomy out here now wow it was a full-on day but I sprayed every single plant in my home the Hoyas I'm gonna do just now actually I'll show you what I'm gonna use So with the Hoyas, I'm actually going to spray them with this orchid mist and on the back it says here, I don't know if you can see that, but it says it's a nutrient solution, growth enhancer, pest repellent, plant tonic and leaf conditioner. So I will give them a little misting of that. They're not showing any signs. Hoyas tend to be more into, well, it's mealybugs that tend to be into Hoyas more um, than thrips and spider mite. I've never seen spider mite. I have heard of mites, it's completely different. I think it's a different type of mite. So hopefully this will be fine. But yeah, I'll spray that off camera because I just feel like this, this 
video is already very, very long. Thank you so much for um, hanging out with me through this ordeal. It, it was, it, the day started off badly, but I'm feeling a lot more optimistic now. And I've actually got like a whole day planned out tomorrow. So I'm really pleased that I made the time today to do it. <sighs> Please do give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy the video and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Turn on the notification bell because I will be doing some random videos here, there and everywhere. And I will see you always on a Sunday, but I might pop up in the week. Have a fabulous week and I will see you here again very soon. Okay, until next time, bye.